Grant Armour from the Outdoor Rec School 3 Rivers here, and I'm getting ready to go canoeing. And one of the common questions we get is how am I supposed to properly strap my boat on my roof? So check this out. So one of the first things you're going to want is a roof rack. There are ways to do this without a roof rack, but I've got mine on here. And a pro tip that often gets missed is if your antenna threads out, Go ahead and take that off so we're not going to break it. Now, if you don't have a roof rack, there are tools like this, which is a foam block. This goes into the gunnel, the edge of the canoe. This sets right on top of the roof, provides some padding. It's a little bit more dangerous in that we can't strap it down quite as well. And it might do some damage to the roof of your car, like denting it uh, or even scratching it. So a roof rack is definitely the optimal option, but there are products like these foam blocks. They come in sets of four for a canoe uh, if you don't have a roof rack on your vehicle and aren't feeling like you're gonna be transporting your boat enough to justify buying one and getting one on there. All right, let's talk straps. So many of you are probably familiar with these ratchet straps that have a hook on one end, ratchet in the middle. These are good tools, uh, but if they're too loose, these hooks can come off the end. If they're too tight because you're ratcheting down really tight with this, you can disform your boat. So what I prefer are straps that have a cam buckle, which is a little pinch mechanism, lets the strap come through here and locks it in nice and tight. So I'll be using these cam straps today. Uh, the other things that I'm gonna use are some of these hood loops. This tucks right underneath the hood of my car and lets this loop come out from my bow stern line. I can do the same at the back of my vehicle. You might have some tie down points on your vehicle already, like a hitch on the back um, or like a towing point off the front of your vehicle that works well for this. Um, but these are a really nice, cheap, simple solution. I have four of these, which is two pair, and they cost me like 25 bucks for all four of them. Additionally, I've got some cord here that I'm gonna use for tying down those bow stern lines. So there's a few pieces involved and then finally because my boats can be sticking off the back of my vehicle I'm gonna have my red flag on there So it certainly is easier to put the boat on the roof with two people, but it's doable with one person as well I'm gonna center myself on that rack Get my gunnels up on the bars and just gently slide it over now I want my boat to be nice and straight on the vehicle, ideally fairly centered as well. I do have those kayak cradles on the far side, so I can't quite push it to the center, but I'm gonna get it nice and solid on here. So here you can see from the front of the vehicle, that boat is nice and square on there. All right, so I got myself two 15 foot straps here. I'm gonna head around to the other side of the vehicle and I am going to uncoil them. I'm gonna take my strap, thread it right around the bar here. And what I want to do is make sure that I've got no twists in this as I unthread it. Um, and one of the reasons I really like a 15 foot strap is it makes it really easy for me to just slide this up and over the boat. Could get by with about a 12 foot strap. 12 footers are great for kayaks. And then I'm going to utilize this cam buckle here. Now we have to be careful that we thread this through the back side of the buckle so that it actually locks. If I go the wrong direction through this and I go from the front side to the back and I pull on it, it's going to come right out. So making sure I've got no twists going to feed right from the back of the buckle towards the front and I'm just going to leave this a little bit loose right now I have a little bit of tension on it but what I want to do is be able to tuck my edges in to make happy H's so I should have my straps coming straight down from the widest part of the boat on either side if I've got angry A's which I'll show you a drawing of it's going to be coming out to the side this area in here is space that the whole boat can move side to side back and forth I don't want that that makes for a loose boat so what I want are my happy H's that strap to come straight down from the widest part of the boat. And by just putting a little bit of tension on the strap for the moment, it's gonna let me check that on the other side as well. So I've got a small A there. Just push that in nice and tight. Gonna do the same thing on the bow. And one of the reasons I don't like throwing the buckle over is it's easy to damage the vehicle by doing that. So I'll pull that in nice and tight to the boat. Get my strap over the top here. Now making sure that my straps are nice and flat on the boat and that they're not crossed. Nice and flat. There's a little bit of a twist that I need to get out. I'll get that fixed the rest of the way in a moment here. But again, just gonna put a little bit of tension on so that it's easy for me to make those adjustments. Get that twist out of there. Push the straps in nice and tight. So I'm gonna pull these straps pretty snug. I don't need to put my full body weight into them, but I do want them to be pretty snug on that boat. And the boat should be tight enough that when I shake the boat, the whole car moves. Right now, getting a little bit of side to side on this part of the strap, and you can see I've got that angry A in there. So I need to loosen the strap again 
push that in, lock it down, giving them a pretty hefty pull, and I fixed that problem. So I've got all this tail. What I'm gonna do first is make a nice stopper. This is gonna be a backup in case something were to fail with this buckle. I'm gonna tuck the strap underneath the tension part, make this nice little four and tuck my loop back through there just to make a nice overhand stopper knot. Then I'm gonna take the rest of my tail, wrap it around the bar. And when I get almost done, I'm gonna tuck it back underneath itself. And what I really want here is less than a fist worth of tail showing. So if I can grab it and nothing's coming out the end, I'm in good shape. But that's gonna make sure that things stay nice and tensioned. I don't have flapping around. So again, that stopper knot, I'm gonna take my tail, feed it underneath the tensioned webbing. Got my nice four shape there. Tuck it back through its own loop. Now, and I don't need to pull this super tight, but I do want it close to the buckle. Wrap my tail right around the bar and then tuck my tail underneath with less than a fist of remaining tail. So a happy H is gonna be those straps coming straight down, not leaving any room for the boat to wiggle side to side. A angry A is gonna be coming out from the side, leaving that room for the boat to potentially wiggle side to side. We wanna make sure we're avoiding that whenever we're strapping any load down. That's looking pretty good, but as you can see, both my stern and my bow are currently free floating in space. If I'm going on a long drive, I'm on the highway, big winds are coming, there's a possibility that the force on the bow and the stern are gonna make this come loose. So I'm gonna tie some bow and stern lines. As you can see, I don't have any great tie down spots. So I'm gonna use these hood loops that I mentioned earlier, and I'm just gonna tuck those under in a nice firm spot, equidistant from the center of the vehicle on either side. I've got those coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a bowline to the one on the driver's side. And the reason I choose the driver's side for the bowline is it's just gonna keep the rope flap in front of my face as I'm driving down a little bit. If you don't know the bowline, go ahead and check out an awesome video that we have on our Facebook and Instagram that teaches both the bowline and the next knot I'm gonna use, which is the trucker's hitch. I'm gonna thread right through the tie down point here. Now make sure that's not sharp. If it is, you're gonna to want to make sure you're using an S hook um, or to take the sharpness off of it so we're not gonna cut our rope. Get my trucker's hitch going. And now this does not need to be anywhere near as tight as the ones that are on the straps on the main part of the boat. Really, this is supposed to provide enough tension that I am not gonna have my boat shifting side to side. And if one of my straps were to break, I am going to have something as a backup. Now, after I've tied my trucker's hitch, I like to tie a stopper knot here just to make sure things are nice and snug and then take all my extra cord and coil it up nice and clean so I don't end up with any streamers as I cruise down the road. And then to finish it up, I'm just gonna coil the tail right around the outside of my spare rope. And just like we did on those straps in the center of the boat, I'm gonna tuck that tail, making sure it's nice and short so I'm not gonna give myself a lot of distraction as I'm cruising down the road. If you got any loose parts, just kinda tuck those back in so that things are nice and concise. So I got my bow line tied, now we're heading to the back of the boat. Okay, so here at the rear end of my vehicle, you can see I also don't have great tie-down points integrated into the vehicle, so I've used more of those straps like I used on the hood. Gonna feed through one, do the exact same process as I did on the front, tie myself a bowl in here. Then here, you notice things are a little bit different. I've got this piece of rope that has been girth hitched through here. It's also got my painter line on, that red flag that's just integrated. That makes it nice and easy for me to keep all my pieces organized over there, feed back through. And then because I've got some extra rope here, I'm gonna go ahead and just utilize it and give myself a second set of rope. Um, and then I'm going to tie just a modified trucker's hitch here. Again, making sure once I have secured it, that I'm gonna tie a stopper knot to keep this from disengaging and then cleaning up my rope, the nice little coil. Now keep in mind, I'm not gonna be able to see this knot when I am cruising down the road because uh, it's behind my trunk. So I wanna make sure things are just nice and secure and good to go. Bam. So there you have it. I've got myself a properly strapped boat here. I have got my two straps that attach to the rack. Got stopper knots on both of them. My tail has been coiled with less than a fist worth of extra tail left over. I've got a bow line and a stern line. And I'm gonna give it one more safety check before I leave. Make sure that if I'm moving the boat, the whole vehicle is moving with it. If the boat's moving and the vehicle's not, I'm gonna wanna stop, fix those straps that are not quite tight enough before I go ahead and hit the road. It's a lot easier to fix them now than to have a boat come off or to have to fix them on the side of the highway. Thanks for joining us. Safe travels and enjoy the water.